is water fasting helpful to cancer patients or could it be dangerous? Um, well, yes, uh, inappropriately used fasting or any other intervention could present uh, problems. It's important with fasting, like all uh, treatment modalities, that be used in appropriate patients in appropriate ways. Uh, there's nothing about having cancer per se that would necessarily eliminate the possibility of including fasting in the overall approach uh, to managing the condition. And in some types of cancers, we have evidence that fasting is particularly effective at giving the body uh, a selective advantage. It turns out that cancer cells don't like the fasting state very well. Their reduced mitochondrial load makes them more dependent on uh, glucose, for example. So in an environment that doesn't contain glucose like in a, or has much reduced levels of glucose, as in fasting, may put those cancer cells at a selective disadvantage. Walter Longo and others have published data suggesting that the combination of fasting with conventional therapies may augment the effectiveness of the conventional therapies and improve all-cause all uh, survival. Do you recommend people do a 36-hour water fast once a week or once a month at home? What I recommend is that patients fast every day and that that fasting period will range from 12 to 16 hours depending on the patient and their specific needs. So that would mean not eating, for example, three hours before you go to sleep at night, not eating too early in the morning, giving yourself a period of fasting. That cumulatively is thought to have uh, a benefit. Uh, and there's actually studies now suggesting improved glycemic control, reduced breast cancer recurrence, just by extending that period of fasting during the evening. And then I recommend that patients may occasionally consider the possibility of a longer medically supervised fasting in a controlled setting. In Chapter 15 of The Pleasure Trap, what did you mean by fasting can save your life and escaping the pleasure trap? The people uh, in our society are now largely suffering from conditions including metabolic syndrome. So elevated blood pressure, uh, blood glucose levels, uh, abdominal obesity, uh, and the like. These uh, contributing factors to the metabolic syndrome all respond very aggressively to medically supervised water-only fasting. And so fasting helps reverse the consequences of dietary excess in a way that really isn't as efficient by any other method that we've discovered. And so I literally believe that fasting can save your life. What is the ideal fasting schedule for a person who is going to do it from their home? Should they do it once a month, once every three months? How long should each fast be? Well, I recommend people fast every day for from 12 to 16 hours. And that when longer term fasting uh, is considered, you really need to do that in conjunction with a physician that's familiar with fasting because it's important that there be appropriate history, exam, and lab so the fasting can be done safely and effectively. And that's particularly true for people that have um, disease and or are on medication. Does water fasting help the body get rid of pathogenic bacteria in the body? Water fasting can be very helpful at helping the body resolve some of these chronic both viral and bacterial infections that are oftentimes reluctant to respond to more conventional care. Some health people say we need salt. Why are you recommending against eating it? Well, I believe that you do need sodium, and it's an essential nutrient without which you die. It just turns out that you get all the salt you need from a whole plant food SOS-free diet, just like you get all the fat that you need from a whole plant food SOS-free diet, and you get all the carbohydrates and sugar you need from a whole plant food SOS-free diet. You, need, you do not need to add uh, exogenous salt, sugar, or oil to the diet in order to get the quantity and quality of nutrients that you need to sustain and maintain optimum health. You recommend a daily fast. Would a weekly 36-hour water fast help with gastrointestinal issues? Um, it might, but we recommend that longer-term water fasting be done in conjunction with a doctor that's experienced with fasting so that the appropriate history exam and lab can be uh, ensured. In Chapter 7 of The Pleasure Trap, what did you mean by losing weight without losing your mind? The law of satiation, towel, circuits, skinny jeans. Yeah, so we talk about the fact that the body's design to maintain uh, optimum weight in a natural setting with a natural diet, a whole plant food diet. However, in the modern world with our highly processed foods, we can fool the satiety mechanisms of the brain into overeating. And that's why salt, oil, and sugar can be so insidious. By including those in the diet, uh, you stimulate overeating and cumulatively that results in obesity and the diseases of kings. Would a 36-hour water fast improve memory? So we recommend that everybody fast for a period of 12 to 16 hours. And the cumulative effect of that intermittent fasting may have a tremendous beneficial effects, including memory. Although memory is not just diet, it also can be affected by things like sleep. You know, sleep deprivation is one of the biggest ways to impair short-term as well as long-term memory function. So we recommend that people 
not only eat a whole plant food diet, but also they get abundant sleep, they engage in regular exercise, and they learn to manage their stress effectively. And cumulatively, those are often very effective in helping uh, preserve cognitive function. Do the water fasts you recommend remove chemicals and radiation from the body? Uh, water fasting is an effective way of giving the body a chance to mobilize and eliminate accumulated metabolic products, endogenous and exogenous toxins. In fact, there are some people that suggest that fasting is so efficient at doing that that you need to be careful because it might overwhelm the body. The fact, in our experience, appropriately screened patients that are uh, fasted appropriately are perfectly capable of modulating the uh, quantity and quality of toxins that are mobilized and eliminated during fasting. In Chapter 17 of The Pleasure Trap, what did you mean by true north, the road home? There's a lot of different paths people are uh, told to take. And there's a lot of conflicting information out there. At the True North Health Center, what we're trying to do is distill all that information and give people a path to wellness that we believe is consistent with the scientific literature. What's wrong with eating eggs? Well, eggs, like all animal products, suffer from the issues of biological concentration, bacterial contamination, viral exposures. They're also extremely high in protein and fat, which we're finding we have to actually try to limit. So eggs are not fundamentally different than any animal products in the whole list of contraindications. So we recommend people adopt a whole plant food diet that avoids meat, fish, fowl, eggs, and dairy products. In Chapter 3 of The Pleasure Trap, what did you mean by The Pleasure Trap, The Rewards of Pleasure? Magic buttons? So there are certain magic buttons out there that uh, people can become vulnerable to. Uh, an example of that are um, the highly processed foods, the sugar, the oil, the salt. And these, m these chemicals actually fool the satiety mechanisms, uh, stimulate dopamine production in the brain, and lead people to overeating. In Chapter 6 of The Pleasure Trap, what did you mean by looking for health in all the wrong places? Mental biases, health by sub subtraction? So the idea is that everybody naturally is thinking um, that whatever their problem is, it's because they're missing something. In a natural setting, that would probably be generally true, that deficiency and depletion you know, would, would be a dominant cause. But in the modern world, it's turning out not deficiency that's the main problem, but excess. And so people keep looking for the pill or potion or powder to correct their purported deficiency when really what the problem is is they're getting too much, too much fat, too much oil, too much sugar, too much calories, and developing metabolic syndrome and the diseases of dietary excess.